In this video, I want to introduce you to factors. So let's take an example. We'll take the number 6. If I wanted to find the factors of 6, I am looking for the positive integers that divide into 6 cleanly, so there is no remainder. So that is limited to numbers from 1 to 6, inclusive. So you might tackle this by a brute force method, by saying, OK, well, what I could do is I could look at 6 divided by 1, which of course is 6. So because there is no remainder there, that means that 1 is a factor. So 1 is a factor. If we did 6 divided by 2, we get 3. So 2 is a factor, OK, because we can divide 6 by 2 cleanly. If I did 6 divided by 3, then I get 2 with no remainder. So that means that 3 is a factor of 6. OK, but when I get to 4, so 6 divided by 4, well, that goes in once, remainder 2. OK, so we can fit 4 um, in there once, but there's that 2 left over. So 4 is not a factor. OK, because there is a remainder there. It is the remainder not being 0 that I'm interested in. 6 divided by 5 would be 1 remainder 1. So that isn't a 0 remainder either. So 5 is not a factor. So then we get to 6. So 6 divided by 6, which is of course 1, 0 remainder. So 6 is a factor. So that means that the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. OK? Now, because we've got those four, there is a neat way of being able to write that. So when you're trying to find the factors of 6, you can look for ways of how you can multiply two integers together, two positive integers together, to make that value. So 6 can be found by multiplying 1 by 6. And it just so happens, of course, that 1 and 6 are factors of 6. We can also multiply 2 and 3 together. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 and 3 are both factors. OK? And if you read it off, then, you've got 1, 2, 3, 6. These are your factors of 6. So let's look at another example uh, by just really using that, this method and separating it out this way. We don't want to have to keep on dividing through by all of the integers from 1 up to the number we're considering. OK? We don't want to have to do that. So, let's say we wanted to find the factors of 30. Now, you can imagine that if I went, uh, went about dividing 30 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 30, I'd be here quite a long time. I don't want to have to do that. So the first thing you identify is that 30 can be found by multiplying 1 and 30 together. OK, that's the easy one. Then if we increase 1 up to our next integer, 2, well, 30 is 2 times 15, isn't it? OK, so that tells me that 2 and 15 are both factors. The next integer that goes into 30 would be 3. 3 goes in 10 times. 
So notice how on the left hand side we have our integers increasing and on the right hand side they are decreasing. What this is telling you is because there is no values here between 30 and 15, that means that there are no factors between 15 and 30. Okay, so, um, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, these are not factors of 30. And we can keep going. Okay, so the next integer would be 4. Now, does 4 go into 30? Well, 30 divided by 4 is 7.5, so that's no good. Can't have that one. How about the next integer, 5? Well, 5 goes into 30 six times. 5 times 6 is 30. And by that point, if I increase 5 up to the next integer, 6, well, actually, I'm just going back round now. So there's no need to go any further. I have found all of the factors of 30. The factors of 30 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. Okay, they are the factors of 30. And so doing it in this way um, really kind of saves time and is a good way of laying out your work. Now, one thing that is useful to know OK, um, particularly those of you who get really adept at this and are uh, strong at finding your factors and good with uh, your mental arithmetic. There is a point at which I know I don't need to go any further. So on the left hand side, I only need to look at the integers up to the square root of 30. Now, the square root of 30, well, 30 is not a square number. So the square root of 30 isn't what's a number that I'm expecting you to know. Of course, you can look it up on a calculator and see what, it's, what it is. Um, but the square root of 30 is going to be somewhere between 5 and 6. Because 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. 30 is somewhere between 25 and 36. So this is... Um, certainly less, oh sorry, um, is less than 6, um, and it's greater than 5, okay? So it is between those two values, and you can see that is as far as I needed to go. So 5 was the largest integer that I needed to go to, up to on the left-hand side before I'd found all of my factors. OK, so that is a useful technique to know. Now we're going to look at one more example. One more example, I think. Let's take a look at finding the factors of 36. OK, so we've done 6, we've done 30, we'll do 36 now. Now... That trick that I just showed you, looking at the square root, might as well do it here. Square root of 36. Well, actually, 36 is a square number. It's 6. So that means that I only need to go up to 6. OK, so that's good news. I don't need to go any further than 6. So first of all, 1 times 36 is 36. OK, we're going to increase this integer up to 2. And I know 2 is going to go into it because it's even. So 2 times 18 is 36. Next integer up is 3. 3 times 12 is 36. Now, what about 4? Well, 36 divided by 2 is 18, divided by 2 is 9. So 4 9s. 36. Now 5, well, this end digit isn't 0 or 5, so 5 doesn't go into 36, but 6 goes into 36 6 times, as we know, because the square root of 36 is 6, and that's as far as I need to go. So the factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 
9, 12, 18, and 36. We don't count the 6 twice, okay? You only count one of them. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 factors of 36.